Davis. Lieutenant Davis, we need you to make a house call, multiple 1054. This is Lauren from the Sheriff's Office, right? You are aware I'm a city detective. They gave me your number. And it's my day off. <laughs> no time for niceties, Lieutenant. Blizzard has overtaxed the department for five days now. So anyway, guy called 911 and said he had a problem with someone and was going to take care of things. Then there were two shots, then nothing, even though the cell phone line is still open. The phone is registered to a Vince Willoughby. We triangulated it, but we got nobody to send out. Your captain cleared it. You've been seconded to us. Take your own car, pick up Mulroon, and get your butts up to Willow Creek Drive. Mulroon know about this? We called her first. Her car's in the shop. Fine. Hope the crew's got the road cleared. Yep. It's finally melting out there, and they're catching up. Here's the fire number. <laughs> Police! Murder suicide? Jerry, the forehead wound is clean. She was dead. Probably frozen when he shot her. Zombie. I have to write this. Even though no one will believe it, we came up to the, to the cab cabin to iron out our differences. Didn't plan on getting snowed in. The LP gas tank was almost empty, so I had to set the thermostat way low. And our cells couldn't find a signal up here during the storm. Madge had a fever anyway, and the chill went right through her. The second night when we got into bed, she said, Vince, if we don't make it out of here, I want you to know it really was a good marriage. We'll get out. Well, just just in case. Good night. Good night. The next morning she was cold, cold and stiff. Her eyes were open, but I managed to shut them. At first, I set her up at the table. Didn't know what else to do. But that was kind of creepy. If I put her outside, she'd freeze instead of rot, and that'd be best. So before going to bed that night, that's what I did. 
But when I woke up next morning, she was sitting at the table again. I didn't know what to make of it. I put her out again that night, and the next, but every morning she was back in. Today was the last straw. She didn't just sit there, she opened her eyes and started talking. Why do you do that to me every night, Vance? It's freezing out there. You can't be freezing or talking. You're dead. Your problem isn't that I'm dead. It's that you're still alive. Because as long as you're alive, you'll carry guilt. You said our marriage was good. I was humoring you. And it doesn't matter what I say. You know what you really are. Tuesday before last, I knew you were up to something. So I followed you. I saw you meet that hussy, check in at a bed and breakfast, and then go to the adjoining restaurant. I didn't get a good look at her, but I knew you both were in heat. So I went to the desk clerk. Excuse me, but don't give me any guff. I want the key to my husband Vince Willoughby's room. We don't have anyone here by that name. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, give me a key before I start breaking things. Let me see the guy's phone. Why? Trust me. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> So, the Tuesday before last was the 17th. Outgoing calls. Ha! Ah, got it. <laughs> the bringer in. <laughs> Subtle. Okay. Redial. What do you think you're doing? Investigating all possibilities. The guy was a wacko. Cabin fever. Oh. Bring her in. Bed and breakfast. Bed mandatory, breakfast optional. How may I help you? This is Detective Mulroon with the Metro Police. We're investigating a possible homicide. I'd like to ask you a few questions. It's not a homicide. It's... I got this, okay? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'll try to help if I can. On the evening of the 17th, were you on duty at the desk? Yes. Did you rent a room out to a Vince Willoughby? Uh, no. Uh, hang on. Uh, he is about 55, heavy, graying hair, goatee. Uh, I could be a lot of people. Sorry I can't help you. Well, that was a waste of time. We've got work to do. Work that doesn't involve zombies, ghosts, or little green men. Keep reading. The desk clerk looked at me kind of strange. Like, why would I be threatening to break stuff? Before I start breaking things. Uh, no, ma'am, it's fine. He signed in as John Smith, see? But no problem, I remember you. Use whatever name you want. Wait a minute. 
it's your turn. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Where are you going? You want to play by play? Can I wait? Why? Because I can. Find anything? False alarm. Don't get the jitters, baby. We're cool. Hang on. I'll be back in a jiff. What's with the fan? I have to tinkle. And I'm demure. Yeah, right. Hey, you want to get lucky? Be nice. Fine. Mindy. Funny meeting you here, Madge. I don't think it's funny at all. Well... We never did get along the greatest. Wasn't my fault. Just because you were 10 minutes older, you thought you had special rights to everything. That's a lie. Besides, it didn't matter what I thought. Mom and Dad always made a share, even Stephen. They thought it was so cute. Yeah. I hated being dressed alike. It made me share my Ken doll with you. And it really hurt. How you gloated. I didn't think you could ever top that. Boy, was I wrong. Well, you solved that one by smashing Ken over my head. Want to try it again? You bet I would. But you're holding a gun and he's too heavy to lift. You don't care about him at all, do you? You're just out to hurt me. Madge, let's just leave Vince blissfully unaware that you know. For now, anyway. Why? I've been looking forward to tonight. I want to have a good time. What you do to him tomorrow or next week is up to you. Even if I agreed, how would we do it? I'm stuck in here and he's probably suspicious already. I'll go back to what I was doing before I was so rudely interrupted. Tell him I was just freshening up. I'll get on top of him and... <coughs> I'll cut that out. Anyway, I'll block his view of the bathroom and the outer door. You've got five minutes to get out quietly. I'll interrupt things, go to the Jane again, and latch the outer door. Don't even think of trying any funny stuff. Get out while the getting's good. Deal? You're holding all the aces. I'll not only get out, I'll never see you or speak to you again. Sounds great to me.
How could you do it, Vince? Out of all the people in the world, why her? Do you know how bad that hurts? I mean, is it midlife oats and you just wanted variety or something? What kind of variety is that? You ain't gonna see anything new when you undress her. We all do things we can't explain. This past week, I was pondering what I was going to say or do to you. But now that I'm dead, and we can never be reconciled, you'll punish yourself better than I could. I think the important thing right now is to shut you up. You going to put a cork in it or not? I can't shut up. My voice will always be inside you. Have it your way. So since I finally got a signal on my phone today, I called 911 before I took care of things. Otherwise our bodies might be here for a real long time. And I don't like to think about animals smelling us, breaking into the cabin and eating us. Hold on. Got it. Got what? I can read the signs in the snow. There's only one type of boot print out there. Every night, he took her out and dropped her in that snow bank. Then again later on, every night, he brought her back inside. I don't know, it's like he had some nambulism. You know, that's... I didn't know what that is. Check these out. This was in his jacket pocket. Hot prescription sleep aid. Just one of these five milligrammers packs quite a wallop. And you know this because... Three guesses. And the first four don't count. My guess is he was anxious, sleep deprived, and he was doubling up on these. If you OD on this stuff, you'll wind up driving your car in your pajamas. And how that car got inside your pajamas, you'll never know. Anyhow, it's a case of inadvertent suicide by guilt. Yeah, except... Except what? What are you trying to prove? I want to know if she was in that motel. Because if she was, and there were things that he couldn't have known, and unless she told him here, then we're dealing with something else. Bring her in. This is Detective Mulroon. Is this the clerk I talked to earlier? Uh, yes, Detective. How can I help you? I just gotta ask, so why the bringer in and not some other cute name like No Tell? That name was already taken. <laughs> There's no place with that name in the metro area. Oh, there used to be. It closed about seven years ago. So why did it close? Can't, Can't tell! tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So... The guy I was asking you about earlier, Vince Willoughby, um, he may have registered under John Smith. Do you have an entry like that for the 17th? I, uh, yes. Uh, he may have had a blonde woman with him. Yes, I remember now. His wife was with him. Later when she came down alone to the desk, she said that was his real name. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> We don't worry so much about real names, if you know what I mean. So she came to the desk by herself and asked for another key? Yeah, she was wearing a different outfit and she acted like she had never met me before. Very strange. Hmm. Then what happened? Guess she went back to the room. Later she dropped off the key alone, again. And then in the morning when the two of them came down to check out, well, she was back to looking the way she had before when they first showed up. Oh, just a second. This is it. It's what? A real live ghost story. Ghosts don't exist. And besides, they aren't alive. 
if she spied on him and never told him about it, then he couldn't have known about the details about her going to the front desk. She's speaking through her own dead body. You're wrong. Why? Because he made some lucky guesses and because you've got to be wrong. Hello, ma'am. This is Lieutenant Davis. Did you say something? I just wanted to add, it, it was real peculiar. What? Well, when she turned in the extra key, I saw she was missing one of her big loopy earrings. <laughs> I noticed things like that. It comes with the job. You notice people's earrings, but not their real names. That's right. Anyway, in the morning when they checked out together, while he signed for the bill, I saw he had the missing earring in his other hand. Looked like he was palming it so she couldn't see it. And then, on the way out, he ditched it in the lobby wastebasket. Thank you, that's all for now. Look, the journal says that he found the earring and that he knew that the motel room was secure from the inside. He guessed that Madge had been watching them and guessed that Mindy caught Madge and let her escape. From that, he could guess that Madge went to the motel clerk for the room key. As for Madge acting stupid to the clerk, cause she didn't know that Mindy was her rival until after she was in the room. Well, she either knew or she didn't. 50-50 chance. He chose to fantasize that she didn't. Everything's covered. His conscience put the words in her mouth. Yeah, LT, whatever. Or it could be even simpler. Remember, if they hadn't had marriage problems, they wouldn't have come up here. And she wouldn't have wound up dead. His grief must have been flowing like the Mississippi. So, maybe she told him everything while she was still alive. But he couldn't handle it, so he buried it psychologically. Then when she was dead, he let it out little by little, as though she was newly speaking it. Far out. Not as far out as any of your theories. It still could be a case of the spookies. Yeah, well, wherever Vince and Madge are, it's out of our hands now. Maybe they're here right now, all around us. You ever hear of Occam's razor? I wax. You're killing me, sm- Shot, just, just sit there for a while. <laughs> Creepy! <laughs> Creepy! <laughs> so creepy!